When it comes to air quality, the bad news is that wildfires and air pollution have really degraded the quality of our air. But the good news is that we're all realizing that the quality of our air, and particularly the quality of our indoor air, is really darn important. I'm so excited to tell you about Puro Air because in 30 minutes, this device will remove allergens, dust, smoke, and gases from your room. It uses a stronger type of filter called a HEPA-14, and it filters pollutants at a microscopic level. I keep my Puro Air running upstairs where the bedrooms are all night. I love that it's quiet. Cleaner air just hits different, doesn't it? Check out everything Puro Air has to offer at getpuroair.com. That's G-E-T-P-U-R-O-A-I-R.com. One more time for the people in the back, getpuroair.com. Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome back. You're listening to another Headlines episode here on the Sustainable Minimalist Podcast on Headlines. They're a little bit different than our average show We on Headlines are covering the need-to-know environmental news headlines in 15 minutes so that you can get the information you need, digest it, and go on with your busy lives. We're going to start off today talking about money (laughs) and why here in America, natural weather disasters are so darn expensive. First off, the United States, right? Surprise to no American here, but the United States is unusually exposed to many different type of weather events. We've got the severe thunderstorms and hurricanes and tornadoes. We also have ice storms and wildfires. You name it, America's got it. Well, last year alone, the United States experienced 28, so $28 billion disasters. So 28 disasters, all of which cost more than a billion dollars each. All 28 of these disasters combined cost an estimated $93 billion. The fact that America is a wealthy country means that America has a lot to lose when hurricanes or floods or some other natural disaster hits. A report released three weeks ago found that the United States suffers the world's second highest financial toll from major weather disasters when those numbers are adjusted to reflect the nation's wealth. The U.S. also pays more in absolute terms than any other country on earth. So what am I saying? I'll say it another way. The property that's damaged from natural disasters here in America is expensive property. The report analyzed the vulnerability and damage in 36 different countries and came to the conclusion that weather disasters may become a heavy drag on the U.S. economy in particular. And that's because natural disasters here in America are driving up insurance rates and adding to Americans' high cost of living. So let's talk about home insurance for a minute, and then we'll talk about the GDP. The study had plenty to say about insurance. When a natural disaster strikes, we Americans face challenges when attempting to get compensated for our losses, right? Only about half of the property damage from recent severe weather events in the United States was insured. Think about that. Only half of the property damage was insured. And at the same time, So simultaneous to that, large insurers have started halting policies on properties that are in flood or wild-prone areas. We've seen this over the last year. Providers are pulling out in California due to wildfires in Florida as well. Parts of Florida are flood and hurricane-prone. So can you imagine? Let's just pause for a minute and imagine you want to move to Florida. Perhaps you're retiring. You've always wanted to live in warmer weather. You find the perfect home. It's right near the beach. You're so excited to move to Florida. (gasps) But wait, halt that excitement because you can't get home insurance. It's not that premiums are high. It's that no one's offering to insure you. That's insane. If you can manage to find an insurance agency that will insure your retirement home near the beach in Florida, know that insurance policies that remain 
have become more expensive overall. According to the insurance analysis group Policy Genius, the average home insurance policy increased 21% between May 2022 and May 2023. Some homeowners have begun foregoing insurance altogether. That, of course, is a risky decision. It's perhaps a recipe for disaster. But if you can't afford the high premiums, what's the average American going to do? Now let's talk about GDP. A professor of real estate and urban planning at Tulane was quoted in the Washington Post article that I'm referencing. This professor said that natural disasters may soon cut into our country's economic growth. And that's because severe storms, like over the course of a year, tend to cost nearly 0.4% of U.S. gross domestic product each and every year. So if we are a country that has modest economic growth, maybe 2 or 3% growth in GDP over a year, but 0.4% is cost due to severe weather storms, our economic growth is slowed as well. Now, I want to mention before we move on that this report also highlights The fact that adapting to climate change now will prevent damage and costs later on. One dollar invested to align construction with new building codes to better withstand floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, all of it. Just investing one dollar can save anywhere between six dollars and ten dollars down the road. But... Only 31% of jurisdictions in the United States at this moment have adopted updated building codes. What does that mean? It means many areas continue to be vulnerable to the effects of natural disasters. Let's move on and talk about methane waste. The last three United States presidents have had something to say about methane. Methane, by the way, is that super powerful greenhouse gas. It's more powerful than carbon dioxide. I've heard it said it's 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide in terms of warming the atmosphere. Methane is also the main component of natural gas. The Obama administration first tried to curb methane waste on public lands in 2016. He unveiled a rule that required companies to capture leaked gas, but then the Trump administration eased these requirements in 2018, arguing that the Obama rules were stifling energy production here in the U.S. And now the Biden administration just finalized a rule Wednesday of this week that seeks to prevent methane waste and states that oil and gas companies will need to stem the release of methane from their drilling operations on federal and tribal lands. Specifically, Wednesday's rule seeks to prevent accidental and negligent leaks of methane from wells and pipelines and other infrastructure. The rule aims to discourage Venting and flaring. Venting and flaring are practices that intentionally release methane into the atmosphere. Now, if you hear that and you say to yourself, what? These industries are intentionally releasing methane into the atmosphere? Yes, that's true. And if your blood is boiling, just know that mine is as well. Between 2010 and 2020, Companies reported venting and flaring an average of about 44.2 billion cubic feet of gas per year. That, by the way, that number is really big. It's hard to get your head around, but that number is enough to meet the energy needs of 675,000 homes. So a lot of methane is being intentionally released into the atmosphere. And this new rule from the Biden administration forces oil and gas companies to either capture the methane or pay heavy penalties. And so, yes, by setting a ceiling on how much gas companies can vent and flare without paying royalties, this new rule is expected to generate more than $50 million in additional payments to the federal government each year. So this rule is essentially a moneymaker. (laughs) The Interior Department also argues that this new rule will conserve billions of cubic feet of gas that might otherwise have been vented or flared or leaked. So some good news. We're going to take our ad break. And when we come back, we are going to discuss throwing money at the problem. The problem, of course, being inefficient industry. I'll see you in a minute. So many of us have chaotic, 
closets that are crammed full of clothing items, and yet somehow we still have nothing to wear. Well, upgrading to high quality and affordable pieces from Quince when you need them is a game changer. They offer organic cotton sweaters and washable silk tops. My 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters are my go-to. Not only are they affordable, but the quality is top-notch. They wear better than the cashmere sweaters that are double their price. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash sustainable podcast for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash sustainable podcast to get free shipping and 365 day returns. One more time, quince.com slash sustainable podcast. Hello, Sustainable Minimalist listeners. Are you committed to living a greener and simpler life? Well, meet Home Threads, your ally in more sustainable and minimalist home decor. As the total destination for decor and furniture, Home Threads helps you define your minimalist lifestyle while respecting the planet. Discover their exclusive Haven collection. They use many sustainable materials without compromising on style. And here's the best part. Home Threads always has the best value. It was time. After nine years of living in our home, it was time to replace our outdoor furniture. And my husband and I, we went to Home Threads. We have a Home Threads patio umbrella and a new bench. And oh my goodness, we are so in love. Create a home that reflects your commitment to the environment. Visit homethreads.com slash sustainable and get a code for 15% off your first order. Homethreads.com slash sustainable. Love where you live. You know what time it is. It's almost Easter. And for my parents listening, you know Easter means making the Easter basket. If you are tired of giving your kids candy in the basket, Perhaps this is the year to give your children some fizzy, sudsy fun from Dabble and Dollop. Dabble and Dollop has you covered with everything you need to make bath time fun, shampoos, bubble baths, body washes, conditioners, bath bombs, you name it. And guess what? The best part is these products are clean. Yes, they are. They're phthalate-free, paraben-free, SLS-free. I could go on and on, but they are Stephanie-approved. Give your kids the best in their baskets this Easter. Visit dabblebath.com slash sustainable today to get 20% off your first order. D-A-B-B-L-E-B-A-T-H dot com slash sustainable and get 20% off for being a listener of Sustainable Minimalists today. And we're back. Before the break, we discussed the financial costs associated with weather disasters here in the United States. And we also discussed new rules out of the Biden administration with regard to oil and gas companies limiting the amount of methane they are intentionally leaking into the atmosphere. Next up, we're discussing new federal funding that will help reduce emissions from industrial facilities. So let's back up. Everybody knows Kraft, right? Kraft, mac and cheese, you know Kraft. Kraft Heinz plans to cut emissions from its mac and cheese factory by installing clean technologies like heat pumps. Heidelberg materials, which by the way, if you don't know what Heidelberg is, you know what Kraft is, but maybe not Heidelberg materials. Heidelberg materials is one of the country's largest cement plants. Heidelberg is going to get up to $500 million from the federal government to capture and store carbon dioxide. And Constellium, which makes aluminum, Constellium will receive up to $75 million, again, from the federal government to install low emissions furnaces that can operate on clean fuels like hydrogen. What is going on here? The federal government is just handing out money left and right. Well, on Monday, the U.S. Energy Department announced some $6 billion in federal funding to help reduce emissions from industrial facilities like steel mills, like cement plants, like a macaroni and cheese factory. 
This funding is coming from President Biden's signature climate law and the 2021 bipartisan infrastructure law. This funding represents the single largest investment in cutting industrial emissions in U.S. history. Now, it's not just three projects. It's 33 projects in total. Nearly 80% of the projects are in disadvantaged communities. Together, these 33 projects are expected to eliminate more than 14 million metric tons of carbon emissions each year. That number, again, a big number, hard to get your head around, but that number is equivalent to taking about 3 million gasoline-powered cars off the roads for one year. Now, transportation at the moment here in the U.S. ranks as the biggest source of emissions, cars and trucks, of course, accounting for the bulk of that pollution. But as emissions decline from transportation and energy, industry, industry, that's what we're talking about right now, industry is poised to become the most polluting sector of the economy by the early 2030s. So you might be wondering to yourself, well, Why is, for some industries, the Biden administration instituting new rules and tariffs for pollution? But why, in this instance, is the Biden administration just handing out checks? Well, if that question is swirling around in your mind, you are thinking smart, my friend. The Biden administration has unveiled very ambitious climate regulations for power plants and vehicles, the automotive industry in particular, but it has yet to impose climate controls on industrial facilities. Why? Well, it's an election year, and don't forget, and nobody wants pushback from union workers in swing states, right? So we're throwing money at the problem without yet issuing the new rules on industrial facilities. If Biden is elected to a second term, that's likely on the agenda. And speaking of the upcoming presidential election, you can best believe the release of these funds are being used as a flex on the campaign trail. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm this week is traveling to three swing states, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin, by the way, to highlight how Biden's economic agenda is, quote, sparking an industrial renaissance. Sparking an industrial renaissance. Sounds so nice, doesn't it? All right, we're going to move on to our final story today, and it has everything to do with radar gaps. Peak tornado season starts next month. Are you ready? You ready for it? Well, I'm about to introduce you to yet another thing to be worried about, and that is radar gaps. I must admit, I had never heard of radar gaps before 10 minutes ago, but radar gaps are areas of poor radar coverage where the closest radar is too far to reliably detect tornadoes or flash flooding or heavy snow, ice storms. This means that people are either not warned by the National Weather Service about the dangerous conditions, or they're warned after the damage is done. The U.S. Weather Radar Network is indeed considered the most advanced in the world, but radar gaps do persist both in rural areas and in highly populated areas. These radar gaps, yes, they do. They leave millions of people vulnerable to severe weather. So let's talk about radars, and specifically, let's talk about the one radar that rules them all. It's the radar we all know and love, and it, of course, is the Doppler. A Doppler radar sends a beam of energy into the atmosphere as it rotates to scan in all directions. The beam bounces off precipitation particles and then goes back to the radar. This helps meteorologists track precipitation and wind and thunderstorms, the likelihood of a tornado, all of it. The Weather Service operates a network of 143 Doppler radars in the contiguous United States and then 16 more in Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. There are, however, dozens of regions in which the Doppler beam is too high in the atmosphere to see certain types of severe weather. A radar beam travels in a straight line that's slanted upward, but the Earth curves down and away from the beam. So the farther away the beam is from the radar, the higher in the sky it scans. That's all very technical. You don't need to know that. What you do need to know is that mountains can block the path of a radar beam. 
So you might be wondering to yourself, all right, well, where are the gaps? I don't care why there are gaps or how there are gaps. I want to know where the gaps are. Well, the most critical radar gap here in the United States is in North Carolina. More than 4 million people in the Charlotte area and in the Piedmont Triad region are vulnerable. In March 2012, in this region, a tornado destroyed nearly 200 homes and injured four people, three of them children. Other radar gaps, and I'm just going to read some of these out. Northern and Western Alabama, Southeast Arkansas, Southwest Colorado, Southeast Georgia, Western and Southern Minnesota, Western North Dakota, Southern Oklahoma. I could go on and on. The radar gaps are everywhere, and I've linked to them in the show notes if you want to check your location. And so local and state officials, meteorologists, universities, and the private sector are ramping up efforts to reduce these radar blind spots. In some regions, though, progress does indeed remain elusive. Now, quick mention before we say goodbye, climate change is altering the Earth's rotation enough to mess with our clocks. Yes, that's right. Global warming is managing to actually measurably affect the rotation of the entire Earth. That is in turn messing with time. The melting of the ice caps in Antarctica and Greenland shifts mass, essentially meltwater, toward the equator. That process increases the equatorial bulge of the planet. And meanwhile, at the poles, the land that has been pressed down by ice rises. Earth becomes more spherical. It's taking a different amount of time to revolve, essentially, which is affecting time. That's our show today. We'll be back on Tuesday where we're discussing eight free ways. So free, costs you zero dollars, eight free ways to reduce your exposure to toxins. It's a great interview. I so hope you tune in. I'll see you then. Have an amazing weekend. If you're celebrating Easter this weekend, happy Easter to you and take care. Swimsuit, check. Sunscreen, check. Phone charger, check. Don't forget to pack the five-hour energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry-on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HETRAVEL at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One-time use only. Not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HETRAVEL to save 20%. Hey, guys. Time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.